What's up, animators? Sharp here. You might have seen me before, you might know who I am. I make a lot of my animator content, such as tutorials, reaction videos, challenges. I do my animator stuff, and I've been using my animator for quite a while. So I started in 2012, and now it's 2021, that's been nine, it's been nine years. I've been using my animator for nine years. My point being, I'm pretty familiar with the software. I've seen the bugs, I've seen the development, I've seen new features added again and again. You could say I'm a veteran. <laughs> I know there's people that came before me, obviously, but during all this time that I've been using the software, I've had time to develop an opinion on what I like and what I dislike about the software. And while it's great, it makes animation super accessible and it's a great place to start from if you wanna learn animation, there are a few things that I would change on the software, which is the title of this video. Today I wanna to talk about 20 things that I would personally change in my animator if I was a developer. Maybe? Are you hiring? So my animator is getting its final update soon, 1.3. And afterwards, Nimi is no longer going to be a developer. He's gonna make the source code open so anybody can pick up where he left off. I don't know how many coders we have in here. I most definitely don't know how to code or how to apply any of these changes. So I wanna talk about them. I wanna put them out there because hopefully somebody is going to implement them at some point or another. Now this intro has been dragging on for ages, so let's begin. What are the actual things that I want to change about my animator? Number one, I want to be able to resize the library window and all the other windows. So the library gives you a limited view. Imagine you're working on a big project with lots of different stuff in it. I want to be able to see more things at once. If you could just resize the window, make it bigger, the project doesn't seem like it's such a mess. It's an organization thing. And as I've said in a previous video, I already made a video about this once before. If you could add like folders in the library, so all this stuff is from one rig, I can just put them in a folder, minimize the folder. So now I have this folder on my library and I can just open or close it anytime I want. So I can just compress sit down a little bit more, organize your project, that sort of stuff. Number two, I have lots of test projects. I'm working on thumbnails, I'm trying to test some mechanics or whatever, and I'm adding this in, and then I'm deleting it, and then I'm adding more things, and I'm just cleaning the project over and over, reusing it. And after a while, my project folder gets really messy with all the amount of stuff that are not even used in the folder. So after a few years of doing this, I now have a few gigabytes of excess stuff that are just copied over and over in my project file. It's junk on my PC. And I have to either delete the project and make a new one, which is probably the right thing to do it. What if there was a button? So there was a bunch of stuff which is not used. My animator just detects it deletes it, and that's all. Number three, a lot of different softwares have this. I think Minimeter should also have this. Once again, you got a big project. There's lots of keyframes in there. You have to zoom out so the timeline is really compact. Would be very cool if you could just hold down shift so you could snap onto keyframes on the timeline. Instead of having to zoom in and find it manually, just holding down shift would snap it. Number four. Now, Nimi talked about this before. I think he also tried to implement it somehow, but hear me out. IK handles. Those of you who don't know, IK stands for Inverse Kinematics. It's basically like a control at the end of my wrist and I can just move the control around and the arm is going to adjust how it needs to be. If you make your character lean onto a table, you can move the body, but the arm is always going to be on the same place. I think it would be a great way to stop leg sliding. Once again, I don't know how difficult it is to actually implement that in the software. It might be impossible. I'm just saying that from a user standpoint, IK handles would be amazing to have in the software. Number five, this is a feature from Maya, which I really like. It's very simple. You can press the letter F to frame onto your selection. So if you select something down there, you either have to fly all the way in or you have to scroll in your mouse key to get all the way in. I was informed under my last video that you have to scroll in the mouse to make it faster and I've been using that since. It's very simple if you can just press F and you can frame onto your selection. It makes your life easier. It's quality of life. Number six. This one speaks to me as well as a bunch of other people that I know use animated textures, but import multiple textures at once. Now, if I want to import multiple textures, I have to import one, and then I have to click again, import the other one, and I have to do it one by one, and it's annoying, and it takes a lot of time. Basically, I want to import multiple textures at once. You can just drag, select, boom, you have 30 new textures. Or, contrary, you could import one image and set that texture as an image sequence. So if your images are renamed with the same name, and then there's a number at the end, and the number is going up, you can select the first one, set it as an image sequence, and this is automatically just going to be like a automatically looping animation of the image sequence. Sequence. There'd be a slider to control the speed of the image sequence or even better Just let us import multiple textures and we'll do the animation ourselves afterwards number seven being able to customize the default animations You know, there's an option down at the bottom that says create a default running cycle Whatever most people would agree that it's not really the best 
animation cycle. Most people just make their own. Like I have a bunch of running cycle keyframes, different ones for different occasions that are just sitting there and I have to import them manually whenever I want to. What if you could change the default animation cycle? I like mine way better and I'm gonna use mine as default. So whenever I want to make a new one, I can just select my keyframes and then click down there and it's there. Yeah, I, I should just replace the default one with the one you've made. I think it would be better. I think it would be nice. Number eight, eight. You should be able to import entities from your world. You would either get a pop-up saying, are you sure you want to import these entities? Or a, a checkbox that says import entities, whatever. It's optional. Say there's seven pigs on the plane, but you want the, the pigs in the animation itself. My animator would just create a bunch of pigs for you. So you imported the pigs as well. I don't know, I see it being useful. Number nine, add item frames and paintings. You'd be surprised, but those, thing, those things are not in the software. There's no way to get item frame entities or painting entities. You have the item that's right like you, you can hold an item frame in your hand like the item variant of it there's no way to put it on a wall unless you make a special rig for it i think it's in minecraft so it should be in my animator by default you shouldn't have to make a special rig just to get an item frame which is already in minecraft number 10 this is an exciting one specular maps and reflections recently i've seen a modded version of my mirror which has reflections and you can just do so much with it i've made a bunch of videos on reflections because i really tried to cheat the system and make him work somehow but honestly specular maps are even better you can have flat surface and apply a bunch of textures to it and you can make it seem ultra realistic and whatnot i'm talking about other 3d softwares but imagine if your gold block was actually reflective and you can make it look like it was raining like say the little bits on the redstone lamps would actually reflect more light than the lamp itself because it's made of metal and that's glass you know you could you can you can make so much more little intricate details using specular maps and all sorts of maps really maps anybody maps are cool number 11 i want to customize the glow for every item individually so you know how there's glow and you can adjust glow color for each item but the glow intensity and the glow radius are universal for all of them in the project so if you have a glowing item up close and a glowing item way back somewhere and if you put the radius to 20 pixels or 20% I don't know is it pixels or percent I don't even know but the close one is gonna look normal but the far away one is just gonna be all over the place because it's universal for all of them I basically want to customize the glow sorry every single video I want to customize the glow radius and perhaps even the glow fall off all of the glow settings for each item individually it gives you way more control it gives you way more flexibility when it comes to this this stuff number 12 timeline tabs God damn it. I've said that in the previous video, but I really need this feature. So there are a bunch of tabs on your timeline, right? Say in the background tab, you have all the different options for the background. You can animate the sunlight individually. You can animate the ambient color, all the different attributes. First up, it would organize the background way more because currently you have all of these background settings yet they all share one timeline and it just gives you no room for overlapping action timeline tabs would fix this because every single attribute is on their own timeline second of all it would organize the projects you could make a folder and set the folder as a timeline tab all the contents in this folder are now moved onto a separate timeline tab some of my footage got corrupted, so I don't know how much I've told you about timeline tabs. So let me summarize. More flexible background options, more organized project, because you can put different things into different tabs, such as furniture, characters, lights, and finally, selecting individual stuff for an example, a phone, as I've said before, would open up a new timeline tab where you could animate position, rotation, scale, so you can have overlapping action in between the different attributes of the item. Not necessarily X, Y, and Z for each individual thing, but at least position, rotation, and scale. Timeline tabs are a necessity. I'm telling you that. We need them. <laughs> Number 13. I don't have enough fingers. I don't know why I'm doing this. Colored timelines. You can change colors of individual timelines. Sometimes it's hard to see which lane belongs to which item, so we can just change colors. Organization. Number 14. This comes from a bug. I think it's a bug, but relative layout scale. I have a full HD monitor, so I can see my animator normally fine. Everything is just as it should be. However, somebody sent me a screenshot into my subreddit and they have a 4K monitor, meaning all 
all the text is super small and hard to read and all the things are squished to the sides, I think the scale of the layout should be relative. Instead of being absolute, say this is 30 pixels, the text is 12 pixels, it should use percentage values. So this is 3% of the screen, the text is 0.7 whatever percent of the screen. So it's identical for all screens, so you can have the same layout. Because if you have a 4K monitor, you're gonna be struggling really hard to read the certain texts and stuff. I think that should be fixed. Number 15. I've talked about this in the timeline tabs, but individual attribute keyframes. I pretty much want to separate position, rotation, scale, color, opacity. What even is there? I want to separate all the attributes so I can animate them individually. That's it. No more fiddling with overlapping action and all that stuff because you can create it from scratch. Currently, if you move something, you make a keyframe for all the attributes, position, scale, rotation, blah, 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 everything. But with the timeline tabs, you could move the position first, overlap the rotation. So rotation is still going and it's eased differently than rotation is so you can have more depth and more realism to the motion. I know this is difficult for beginners, so I think the option should be toggleable. Obviously, you can't just throw it out there and just expect everybody to understand, but we need this. Otherwise, you have like 7,000 folders and it's just not practical. Number 16, I want to import video files as textures. In my divided four animation, the sky is warped and deformed because they're in some weird dimension. And I did not use image textures because that's a lot of textures and I don't have the patience for this. Instead, I opted for a blue screen sky, so the sky is completely blue, and I can replace it later in After Effects and added a video in the background of it. If I was able to import video as texture files, I could have simply used a sky video. Video textures. Video textures. Sharp for president. Number 17. More audio options. Once again, lots of people don't have access to editing softwares in Adobe Audition, Premiere Pro, and all that sort of stuff that helps you with the audio significantly. So more audio settings inside my animator would help out a lot. First off, you could position an audio in 3D space. So the further away you are from the camera, the more quiet the audio is going to be. You could also just play the audio as absolute, so it's always going to be the same loudness regardless of whatever, just like we have now. If you want to go further, you can also calculate the echo and the space and all that stuff, but that's a little bit of an overkill, and it's probably gonna make the software more laggy and all that stuff. The other thing is like a randomizer sort of thing. So if you import like 20 different sounds, and you make a keyframe here, whenever you pass this keyframe, it's gonna play one of those 20 sounds at random, so you have more control, more randomization. And you can use the same randomizer for multiple sounds if you don't want to repeat them over and over again so have some variety so different stepping sound effects for for the grass or the concrete so when you make steps there's a little bit of variation in between those number 18 keyframe selection tools one that i have in mind particularly would be to select all the keyframes beyond a certain point you've already made an animation but you messed up the pacing in between you could select everything from this point and move it apart a little bit so you fix the timing and the pacing here, but you don't mess up everything beyond that point. You could still do it now, but you have to select every single item for every single character and all the drop downs, say some of the rigs I use, you have to drop down like seven items to get to that one thing, like one like scaling of the teeth, I guess. But if I want to delay everything, I have to remember what all I did. You can just select a point in the timeline, select all the keyframes beyond that point for every character, for everything, and you can just move it apart so you fix the pacing of your animation. Another useful one would be to select everything except the last keyframe for every single object. That way you can delete everything except the last keyframe and I can continue where I left off. Or you can select multiple keyframes and stretch them apart. So you keep the same relative timing of the motion but the overall action is now longer so you can stretch it apart. After Effects has this and I love it. All that and more. Number 19. Motion Blur. That's it. Motion Blur. <laughs> Based on how quickly the objects are going, motion blur. <laughs> if it's possible. Motion blur is fine though, motion blur. And finally, number 20, adjustable settings for fog, wind, and glow, and all that stuff for individual items. There's a lot of fog outside, you know? And you don't want this object to be affected by fog as much. So far, what you can do is you can go into background settings and turn it on or off completely. Basically, I want a slider. Maximum fog to no fog, so you can have in-between values. I saw that as I was working on my shaders in my animator video. It's even on the video, I said that I wish I had a slider. You know, if I could disable fog 
by decimals because brightness doesn't do the same as fog does same for the glow same for the affected by wind once again it gives you more flexibility because currently either everything is completely blown out by wind or nothing is there's no in-between value say the leaves will be rustling a lot but there's this special material whatever that will just have a slight bit of wind and i have reached the end of my list so that is just my take on how i would improve my animator personally i want to know what's your thoughts on this what would you change drop a comment below let me know how you would change my animator yourself this is just my take on it hopefully someone who picks up development might put some of these suggestions in and if you guys come up with a lot of interesting suggestions i might even make a part three of this video where i talk about even more changes i will change in my animator so hopefully you had fun i definitely did if you like this video you can show support by dropping a like blah 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 you've heard it before several thousand times but with all this on the side thank you for watching i love you no homo i love you and i will see you next time stay sharp